This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Quick things here that you may you may say, I I don't care, okay? Just, but I just was curious about your opinion on it. Okay. If you had one. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Kendrick Lamar being named the halftime uh, artist for the Super Bowl? I do not have any thoughts. Okay. Yeah. That didn't, didn't turn your trick at all or anything It doesn't along. make me upset. It doesn't make me happy. I really don't have I, – I don't – I've heard the name before. I don't know what he sings, so. though. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. – you know, if you had to put a gun to my head and said – Kendrick mm-hmm. Lamar sing something from him, I'd <clears throat> I'd be dead if you pulled the trigger, which would be bad. Oh, well, that would be bad. I think mm-hmm. so. I think that'd be sad. I think there'd be some that would be sad. Um, do you have any opinion or do you care about John Sterling coming back and doing the Yankee games for the playoff run after earlier this year he had, quote, retired and now is going to take those games away from somebody else as a as a broadcaster play-by-play guy and a person that uh follows you know sports in general uh what do you what do you think about that i feel like if he retired he retired yeah that's kind of how i thought too but we let the guys that are doing the games now get their chance right this is not this This is is not an eric nadell um, situation right it's not roger clemens hey i just want to skip the first half of the season mm-hmm. and come on for the end here right yeah. right mm-hmm. i mean kind of had his hurrah and uh i i uh agree with mike francesca who said i don't think it's fair to the guys who've been doing the games yeah, later you've got to let somebody else work it's i think the way it's, it is i think it's a bad luck for john sterling i do too i do too he had his day in the sun he had his championships let the other kids work yep mm-hmm. i completely agree with you on that okay Mm -hmm. um the last thing that i was curious of your opinion about is this (laughs) it's deon sanders controversy about after his son scores a touchdown and apparently after the kicker scores something as well makes a field goal instead of immediately going to the colorado fight song which would make complete sense instead um, well, Dion has denied that he said to the uh, Colorado band, you can't play the fight song before my son's song plays it because he's a rapper too. Um, but apparently apparently, the song Main Thing uh, will be played a snippet after um, Shador scores and after the field goal kicker uh, makes a field goal kicker, Alejandro Mata. That's before the fight song "Glory, Glory, Colorado" and "Fight CU." Those have been played after CU touchdown and field goals for years and years and years. Seems I would be very disappointed if we were doing that here. Yes. Okay. Yes. I also think they should play Sh- Shadur's song after he throws a pick. Too. <laughs> That game is sold out here in Lubbock. Of course it is. <laughs> well, the Cincinnati game is too. So mm-hmm. That's Cincinnati good news. Is, yeah, right, right, right. So mm-hmm. it's not I don't think that it was sold out because of Dion. I think it's sold out because hopefully people want to go to the game. Uh I think it's a combination of both. Okay. Yeah. People want to see Dion get his butt kicked, so to speak. And hopefully that uh, hopefully did, that could happen. Are you certain that's gonna happen? No, I'm not certain of anything right now. Yeah. 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 To, be honest, to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not certain of anything right now. That um, scares the heck out of me right now. Well, does, does Saturday kind of scare the heck out of you a little bit, too? Uh, not the heck out of me, but... Okay. What was the general consensus of uh, the folks that uh, were making predictions on this in the, from the Double T 97.3 100-point score uh, uh, voices? You'll have to wait until that article hits oh, double T ninety seven three. It's uh, it's still pending, huh? 
It comes out today. It comes out today. Okay, so be looking yeah. for that. You can yeah. you can see what everybody mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. has. Ask, ask me that question tomorrow. Okay, I'll ask yeah. you that question. I don't want to tell you what the, the article before I, it's even posted. Okay, I just didn't. You know, we want those clicks, Chuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's sure. all about those clicks. People need to go read the article. Right. If no, we tell you. them about the article now, right. it's then coming. they don't get the click. Hey, folks, it's coming. coming. Mm-hmm. It's coming to doubleT973.com today. So Jamie is putting all that together. And what time? We're not going to tell you. Why? We want you to keep checking back to get the clicks. Mm, I would say probably before 10. At this shush, 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 shush. I'm having some fun. <laughs> yes. Okay. Before before 10 o'clock. Okay. I'll be, I'll be looking. I'll be looking for that. I um, would. I would. I would think most Red Raider fans are still predicting a win, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I'm not a blowout like we were at the beginning of the year, but right. I'm predicting a win. So, I don't know, for for whatever that's worth. What was your what was your take that it was going to be close into the fourth quarter or it was going to be less than 10-point game or what was it? Like this summer? Yeah. It, I, I said it was going to be closer than everybody thinks it's going to be. And I think I, said, I, think I might have even said it's going to be a 10-point game when, it, when we get into the fourth quarter. And I was laughed out of the room. But I, I hate the fact that I'm somewhat right on that. Although I'm not really, I didn't really think it was going to be like this. It, you know, all, you know, just being full, just fully transparent. I just thought it would be a little bit closer because I do think that there's Eric Morris is going to come in here with, and I realize he's not playing. Okay, he's coaching, but I think I think he probably comes in here with more motivation, and Stephen Hamby with more motivation than Keith Patterson. How how I, I, this this take keeps getting brought up? Yeah. How are we not motivated? Well, I think we are. I, I mean, Ho- hopefully, how we are. Are we hopefully, not matching their motivation? Hopefully, we are. Have you seen what the way yes. that this team has played the last two weeks? Yes. How are they not furious I'm sure that, and motivated? I'm sure they are. I'm sure to they're play frust- better. I'm sure they're frustrated. How do we not? Ma- I mean, if, if right. we're losing mm-hmm. the motivation battle. Mm-hmm. Man, we got serious issues. I don't think we're losing the motivation battle. I just think the other guy. I don't, I'm not saying they're more motivated than we are. I'm just saying that they're highly motivated to win. In addition to coming in and playing a team that's a power four school, that they that there's others that have some axes to grind. Okay, well, we got a lot of axes to grind too. You bet we do. Yeah, you, you bet. You bet we do. Uh, let's see. Here's here's from Bullfighter. Tech will win by less than 10 against North Texas. Chuck said 735 on June 11th, 2020. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Today is September 11th, 2024. Here is Jeff McGuire. Going to start in 1927. Yankee slugger Babe Ruth hits his 50th home run during his Major League Baseball record 60 home run season in a Yankee 6-2 loss to the St. Louis Browns at Yankee Stadium. I didn't know they lost in 20, 1927. Well, they weren't undefeated. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, it's just, you know, who do you think they are, the 27 Yankees? <clears throat> a year later, Ty Cobb's last hitting appearance. He pops out against the Tigers. Hmm. Oh, it pops out against the Yankees, excuse me, playing for the Tigers. 1951, Florence Chadwick becomes the first woman to swim the English Channel from England to France, taking 16 hours and 19 minutes. I think there's a movie coming out about that. Really? Starring Daisy, Daisy Ridley, I think. I think I thought saw that. Or I was a fake pro- promo, and I've fallen victim to that a couple of times. Uh, 1956, Cincinnati Reds outfielder Frank Robinson ties a rookie record with his 38th home run. He was pretty good. Mm-hmm. 1983, Pittsburgh running back Franco Harris runs for 118 yards in a Steelers 25-21 win at Green Bay to become the only the third player in NFL history to rush for 1,100 yards. Hmm. You know, for as great as the Steelers were, I mean, they won four Super Bowls and they won you know, in a pretty short amount of time, their drop off, you know, was really severe. I mean, it started with Bradshaw getting hurt and then not drafting Dan Marino and Gabe Rivera that, you know, here in the next couple of weeks 
having his car accident. But after after that, I mean, it just it's like they were at the epitome at the very top, and they they went to the doghouse pretty quick. Remember earlier we were talking about Ty Cobb and his final plate appearance? Was today his first plate appearance? In 1985, Pete Rose of the Cincinnati Reds gets hit career hit number 4,192 off Eric Show of the San Diego Padres. Chow. Chow? Chow. Chow. Yeah. Uh, eclipsing Ty Cobb's record. So on the anniversary of his oh. last plate appearance, he gets passed. You think Pete Rose planned that? Because I, I, I think Pete Rose knew that. No idea when that when when he was doing that, that nobody brought that up that it was but I'll because Pete Rose is a he's a historian I bet he knew that that was Cobb's last plate appearance on the on the the day that he went to the ballpark. Nineteen ninety three U.S. opens women. So are you suggesting that he like didn't get hits in other games just to win it so he could break the record on that day? I don't know what. I, I'm not buying that. I just don't know what I don't know what the day before was like for him. Uh, I'm not suggesting it was like a Hank Aaron deal where they they sat him down, you know, uh, after he tied Bruce's record in Cincinnati, and then sat him down for the rest of that series so that they could um, break the record in uh, Atlanta because they did do that. I don't know. It just it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. It would be. Okay. 1993 U.S. Open Women. Excuse me. Yeah, 93. U.S. Women's o- Open Women's Tennis. Steffi Graf wins her 15th Grand Slam singles title. Third U.S. title beating Helena Slovaka. 6-3-6-3. S-U-K-O-V-A it's, uh, with the, the I thing. I think it's Helena Sokova. No, Sokova. I think it's Sokova. Sure. 1994. U.S. Men's Tennis. Andre Agassi wins his first U.S. title. Beats uh, Michael Snitch of Germany, 617675. So a little husband and wife action there. There you go. I mean, they weren't husband and wife at the time. but No, they were not. And in 2010, Baron Batch scores twice. Taylor Potts throws three touchdown mm. passes. And Texas Tech blocks two punts in a 52-17 to win over New Mexico. Wow, could we just step and repeat that on Saturday and everybody would feel good on Monday, huh? Mm-hmm. Definitely wouldn't punts. feel bad. It'd be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. Happy National Hot Cross Bun Day. Okay, I don't know what that is. It's ba- it's like a, a sweet roll uh, that sometimes you, you've got like some sometimes it's, it's cinnamon or raisins or whatever it is, and it's got a uh, it's either you, icing or sometimes it's just the way the bread is cut so that when it bakes it forms a cross on the top of it. They're very tasty. Happy birthday to Ludacris, who's 47. Paul- <laughs> you surprised he made it to 47? Uh, no. no. <laughs> okay. No, not at all. It's not Ludacris that he made it to 47? Not at all. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, he's, he's a pretty well-adjusted guy. Okay. Everybody's favorite WWE hype man, Paul Heyman, is 59. Harry Connick Jr., 57. And Ed Reed is 46. Man, he was a tough football player. And on this day... In 2001, approximately 8.46 a.m., clear Tuesday morning, American Airlines Boeing 767, loaded with 20,000 gallons of jet fuel, crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping burning burning hole near the 80th floor of a 110-story skyscraper, instantly killing hundreds of people, trapping hundreds of more in higher floors. And I don't think I need to tell you anything more about this day. In sports history. All right, this day in sports history. Thank you, Jeff. It is uh, six fifty-one this morning here on the morning drive. We get this thought from Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man, he is in St. Louis, Missouri, this morning. I I think Pepsi Man should drive the uh, drive the truck that he's driving over to the arch and take a selfie and send it to us. If he's anywhere near the arch, I mean, you can probably see it from wherever he is. I don't suggest that you go up in it, but just you know. Send us a Pepsi man with your guns up underneath the arch. I think that'd be really cool. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Pepsi man says this. I'm tired of all the bandwagon fans. You're either a fan or you're not. Like Aaron Rodgers said yesterday, once you jump off the ship, don't come back. Somebody immediately responds, 
to him, okay, boomer. I think like as in baby boomer, but Pepsi man's not a baby boomer. He's not, he's not old enough to be a baby boomer. I don't know. I think you have a right to be upset and, and, uh, I mean, that's what being a fan is. I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you get mad and, you know, maybe then you, then you get drawn back in and then, then you, you, you have hope and then you have your heart torn out and, but I mean, yeah, if you're dog cussing your team, then you probably need to take a lap or two. <laughs> you seen how this team's played? <laughs> yes, I know, but I, I think mean, they deserve a little dog cussing occasionally. No, I understand that, but I mean, that doesn't mean you just, you know, I don't think you can, I don't think, I don't agree with the, you know, if you, like Jeff here, you know, claiming he's not going to watch any Cowboy games. You're going to follow him. You're going to know what's going on. On Monday when I come into work, yeah. <laughs> Read the recap, figure out what happened so I can talk about it in the sports center. And he's digging in. Uh, this, <clears throat> I thought Hot Cross Buns was only a song that beginners play in band. Didn't know it was actual. An actual song. Okay. I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, we get a score prediction here. Uh, North Texas 38, Texas Tech 28. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I, I, I guess I can see you giving up 30-something points. I can also see you scoring 30-something points. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you'll see a much better offensive performance mm-hmm. this week than we saw last week. For whatever reason, you just you just you're better offensively at home. Yeah, way better. I mean, we've talked about all the struggles that this Joey McGuire team has had on the road. Now, what three and nine on the road? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but you got to look at the offensive side of the ball. I mean, in 2022, it was almost a 20 point difference from scoring at home compared to on the road. Last year it was nearly two touchdowns, and this year, thirty-six. After just one of each of those small sample size for this year, yeah. but that's that's a huge difference. That's a trend. Yeah, yeah. You you got to play better offensively and on the road, and you've been much better at home. So I, I think your offense will be in the thirties again this week. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction drive thank you for being with us today on lubbock sports station double t 97.3 and double t 97.3.com we'll have ranger baseball some day baseball today from arizona as the rangers play at the diamondbacks they lost uh, last night so uh, that'll be a little getaway for them and then they're off to the emerald city to take on the seattle mariners it'll be the first of four man we thought that was going to be a well i did i thought you know as you kind of you know obviously over the last 60 days or so, it's not been as much. But when you looked at the schedule, I thought, well, maybe that could be a, you know, one that you really need to win some ball games in, you know, going down the stretch. But mm-hmm. uh, that's that's not necessarily the case. You need to win ball games, but you ain't fighting for anything. Uh, we'll also have Cowboy Crosstalk tonight on the air for you at 7 on Double T 97.3. All right, a couple, uh, couple things here from uh, Texas Tech Defensive Coordinator Tim DeRuiter, Jamie. Um, he, uh, the other day, was asked about the quarterback run and said, and the question was, what leads to the quarterback run being so good against Texas Tech? I think it's more execution. Um, part of it was, I mean, we didn't go into this game plan thinking we were going to see the quarterback run game like like we did. Uh, we knew on third down and, and short and fourth and short and down in the red zone they, they were going to use it. Um, you know, I, I think that as we showed them different looks to, to – shore up our coverage a little bit they one of their answers was to spread us out and, and use the quarterback run game the biggest issue was not so much the run game was how we attacked it from outside in and not keeping it leveraged uh, it's something that we've got to do a much better job of in, in doing that anytime you use a quarterback in the quarterback run game uh, you've got an extra hat and so guys have to be very very disciplined in, in how they fit it and, and we didn't fit it uh, well enough obviously on, on Saturday and something we got to continue to address I liked his answer to that question last uh, year better. What was it? What was the answer last year? It was the uh, well, we've got to do a better job of keeping the levers. That was part of it as well, mm-hmm. but it was also the it's effective against a lot of people because of the extra hat that you get at that point. Mm-hmm. It, it it's not just tech. It's 
this is effective against everybody. Look at all of college football. Running quarterbacks are a thing because you've got guys that are focusing on their one thing that they got to do, and not one person is focused just on the quarterback. When you do have that, we call it the spy, which is just something that probably needs to be a universal thing in your defense, but when those guys are having to be in double coverage on somebody, that makes that quarterback run even more effective. If yeah, it, if it works so well in college football, how come we don't use it? Our guys keep getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, a fair, that's a fair point. That's a good, great response. Really? I, I like the fact that he said, hey, it's a lack of execution. I mean, very simply. I mean, you know, we did not play it the way that we're supposed to play it. It's a, I mean, it's it's not injuries. It's not size. It's not, you know, they got better people than we do. No, we just didn't execute it uh, very well. So that's uh that's one thing from Coach DeRuiter. Here's uh, here's his thoughts on uh, North Texas. Uh, the question's basically more of the same from North Texas this week. Uh, n- not exactly the same offense, but the, very similar conceptually uh, this week that we've seen. And it's it, but the thing that uh, you know, I would hope that going against our offense, which is very similar conceptually, that our guys take that practice to game day and and be able to play with the same speed that we do against our own offense. Uh, uh, Coach Morris does a great job of spreading people out. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of that that air raid uh, in him, but he's evolved it to where they're running the ball very, very well. They're they're running for about 145 yards a game. Uh, they got a couple of good backs that are big and explosive. Uh, you know, they they work with tempo. They've got a veteran quarterback in in uh, Chandler Morris that you know was at TCU, so he's seen a lot of football. Uh, does a great job with his legs as well. So we'll see some quarterback run game from them. Um, and then they've got a couple, you know, really explosive receivers that we got to, you know, obviously do a better job than we've done in the last couple of weeks. Man, sounds sounds imposing, doesn't it? <laughs> when you when you hear it quite quite like that, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's North Texas. It mm-hmm. shouldn't be that imposing, right? right? I'm, not, I'm not trying to poo poo them or say they don't have mm-hmm. talented players, but um, yeah, you should be better than them. Uh, and Chandler Morris started his career at Oklahoma, yeah. then went to TCU, and now uh, North Texas. And uh, you know, his dad is now the uh, wide receivers coach slash passing game coordinator at Texas State. And he had previously been at uh, Tulsa, Clemson, and then uh, spent time at SMU and Arkansas before going to Auburn, then back to high school then to South Florida as an offensive analyst, Clemson as an offensive analyst, and now Texas State. So Goodness. I know. Man, he's been... Traveling man. He he has literally been... all Since since 2014, he's been to Clemson, SMU, Arkansas, Auburn, Allen, South Florida, Clemson, and now Texas State. Man, what? That's a... That's a lot of moving around. He's a very hireable guy. <laughs> a lot of people want his services. He uh, was eighteen and forty in college and uh, one hundred and seventy eight and forty three in high school. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So that's he's had obviously had uh, quite a bit of uh, success on the high school level, but. You know, we'll see. We'll see what uh, Ch- and Chandler Morris is. He's an older guy. I mean, he's twenty three years old, or you know, he's going to be twenty four in uh, in December. So, like uh, Coach DeRuiter said, he's got quite a bit of, you know, he's, he's played quite a bit of football. Sure. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. he's he's played in some games that are that are big or been around big programs. So, um, this will not be, uh, I would think, an imposing arena for him on Saturday. But you can make it imposing by you know, putting pressure on him and and uh, and crowd noise and things along those lines. So, uh, by the way, I was talking to a guy yesterday. You know, they moved the band uh, to the uh, northeast corner of the stadium. I loved it when the band was in the south end zone, just because I felt like the whole stadium could hear it, and, and we could selfishly we could hear it in, in our spot on the east side, where we sit now on the about the south side of the fifty at about the forty five. It's hard to hear the band. Um, but um, this guy was telling me, it's like, yeah, it's really, really loud down there with the band. Um, just because of, you know, and the West Side, I'm sure, can hear it uh, very well. Um, 
So, but when those teams are driving north, and that's one of the things that they they talked about against uh, Abilene Christian, why they chose the north end was because the student section down there and the band down there, and they felt like that they could kind of get inside the head a little bit. So, just a just a thought. So, um, I would like like I said, I love I love hearing the band play, and and um, but it's, it's, I don't know that it's going to be possible for us to hear it all the time like we like we previously did with it being in the south end zone but well if we can progress if we can't hear it all the time could we play Shadur Sanders rap song man I would that be all right mm, instead no I really like the music mix that we had uh the opening week I thought it was really the mix master did a good job I thought so yeah I didn't have any issues okay Um, that's good I didn't I didn't have any I didn't have any issues so I don't I didn't think there was anything too uh, too out of line at all. The only thing that was out of line was the jack wagon. And I'm not going to say he was a student because I don't know that he was a student, uh, but he was a jack wagon who decided to scream F-bombs at the very beginning. And a guy below me, um, before I could even say anything, he basically turned around and said, hey, hey we don't do that. And uh, the guy proceeded to keep doing it. And then the KT black person come in, came over there and he calmed him down or she calmed him down. And then they decided, hey, we're going to take a look at your ticket. Oh, you're not supposed to sit here. So you can go sit where you're supposed to sit now. Mm. Yeah, and then he choice meandered up to the press box. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I ever saw. I hope he was listening. I think if I ever saw you two guys over on the east side, I would probably die of a heart attack. <laughs> I would invite you. I mean, I would love for you to come over and spend a little time with us, have some popcorn. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I think I'm more of a West Side guy. Yeah, I think you're a press box guy. You're yeah. away from me, guys, what you are. <laughs> Jamie's question of the day is next on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is brought to you by Kinetico of West Texas. I just want to say this. There is nothing that's going to scare the Jesus out of me. But Jesus. But Jesus. Is that different? Is What is but Jesus? Yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking. I was just thinking. Okay. Is that even a word? But Jesus. I don't is know. That, but but I, is that, is that, I'm just saying Jesus is not leaving me. No, okay. Nothing is going to scare. I mean. Okay. You know, okay. nothing. Pictures from your pool parties. They're I mean, just, they might <laughs> scare the lunch out of me, but not not the Jesus out of me. Just wanted to throw why, that why out do you, there. Why do you have to? Why do you have to go down that route? It's not. I mean, well, I'm just thinking of the scariest things on earth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus is. Uh, let's see, what does the slang word "but Jesus" mean? Surprise, pleasure. Used variously to express surprise, pleasure, ignorant, anger, arrogance, annoyance, etc. Yeah, all those things: surprise, pleasure, anger, annoyance. I mean, if you came over, you could uh, ring the bell, and the lucky lady might bring you a, mm-hmm. uh, an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> although, although Sunday we had a little problem with the bell. The bell got rang a couple times, and she didn't hear it. So I told the little phenom. I said, throw a wet towel against no, the door. She, he threw a he threw a little wet a uh, little wet Nerf ball against the door, and uh, the lucky lady came outside. She goes, who who threw that? And uh, and the little phenom said, I did, Grandma. And uh, so I mean, it was all good that since he threw it. <laughs> I got, got the question. Yeah, I don't. How is Chuck still alive? How has the lucky lady not killed him? Those poor future wives, poor future teachers. Poor they're good. They're model citizens with the teachers. They're really good with the teachers. I think they 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 follow that. Hmm. <clears throat> oh. You entertain us, Mister Hines. You but really do. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad to. I mean, we got our we got our ice cream and we were happy. Mm-hmm. You know, me mm-hmm. and the boys. <laughs> 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 Servant Laura made sure you got your ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> oh, very, Laura, very, very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. All right, so here is my question for you guys today. Mm-hmm. You're about to embark on a three-game homestand. Okay. 
That's what we would call it in baseball. Okay. Yeah. I want you to tell me the Red Raiders record hmm. in those three games. North Texas, Arizona State, Cincinnati. 11 a.m., 2.30, and 2 be determined. I'm just going to tell you this, Jamie. I am on the turnaround train, baby. 3-0. and That train is moving down the track. And I am the, uh, I am the, in, I am the, uh, what do they call him? Engineer? Conductor. The conductor. Well, no, I think I'd rather be the engineer. Conductor's probably my, yeah, you're probably right. Conductor would be better. You're more of a caboose. Yeah, caboose conductor kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm feeling like. This is a, this is turn around that frown, man. This is going to be we're going to be feeling good by the end of September, 29th of September, boom, four and one. Train is rolling down the track. People are back on, back on the. They're going to climb aboard. Going to feel good. We're on, I'm on a feel good train today. I also think you'll be three and zero in your next three because mm-hmm. you are the better team for the other compared to the three, especially playing at home. However, I don't know that we will feel any better at four and one because I have a feeling that these three games are going to be exactly like the other, the last one you had, where it's overtime against a team that you shouldn't. It's a lot closer than it needs to be. You, you're going to have lackluster performances until these guys turn it around or until Taj Brooks comes back. And like I said, I'm not expecting him back this week. Um, I am. I'm expecting him back. At, I would rather be pleasantly surprised. I need a pleasant surprise at this point. Bold statement right now Taj Brooks. 100 yards, he's back, two touchdowns, play action pass, boom, down the field. You know, Josh Kelly, three touchdowns. Sign me up, man. Do I have to save all that for Friday? <laughs> sure. Actually, it's not me. It's Bre- Brennan that needs to. Brennan, you got to come to work and, and come save that for yourself on Friday. I think I am at three and oh two. I think in order of difficulty, I would go Arizona State most difficult, Cincinnati number two, North Texas number three. Uh, I'm you are not currently favored to win against Arizona State. I think you're a different team at home where your offense scores, unlike on the road, and that's why I have you winning all three of these games. I feel like all three of them could be shootouts. We could be seeing, you know, high 40s to low 40s, mid 40s to high 30s in all of these games. I think that if this team is going to win football games, it's going to have to be with high scoring games. Uh, I feel like, if I'm being honest here, I feel like if you don't go 3 0, I don't think you make a bowl game. Mm-hmm. Because if you go 2 and 1, mm-hmm. You are at three and two. Mm -hmm. And if you are losing to, let's say, Arizona State, what other three teams are you beating? Man, that sobered me up pretty quick. (laughs) But you're right. I mean, because then you got to go, okay, you're playing at Arizona. Boom, that's a tough one. You, at home against Baylor, I would assume that's kind of one. That's one then, that you then, would then, you, you. then you're going on the road at TCU. What does TCU look like on October the 26th? Uh, right at this point, it's not even about the opponent. What do you look like on the road? Are you anywhere close to who you are at home on the road? Yeah, can you? Same thing at Iowa State. I mean, yeah. uh, Iowa State... Iowa State didn't. I mean, they didn't look great last week in their win over but they Iowa. Won. But they found a way to win. Yeah, and, and they made on plays the road, down the stretch. Yep, in in a place yep. that's been a den of demons for them yep. to a degree. Yeah, I mean, I have a hard time coming up with three wins if you're not winning these three games. I I still think you could win at home, protect home base. You know, with Baylor, Colorado, and and West Virginia, I'm not going to say possibly I'm those would say, those would be the three that I would lean towards. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. I would. I'm not going to say it's a cakewalk or anything like that, but I do. You know, we can only win one game Saturday. They're not playing a doubleheader, mm-hmm. so we'll see what see what Saturday brings. I just hope that I hope that Saturday brings fewer uh, fewer to no pre snap penalties, 
you know, conversions on fourth down. You don't have to convert them all. And then complimentary football and then getting the ball down. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Uh, good morning. Uh, well, Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Uh, some things here from the Yates Flooring Center chat line as we come to you from the First United Bank studio. Uh, Clay says, Tech needs to trounce UNT. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I, don't, I would be a fan of that. I don't know. Is is this kind of one of those games like we talked about before ACU that um, if you if you beat them like a drum, everybody's going to say, well, this is what you're supposed to do. I mean, is there is there a win to come out of this? Or is it different now because of how you've played against ACU and how you've played against Washington State. Absolutely. No no question. No question because um, I don't want to say expectations have been lowered, but just where you are, your level of play has been lowered. Mm-hmm. So first and foremost with me, uh, can can your quarterback be more accurate and, and look healthy? Because I think there are a lot of people out there questioning right now whether he's healthy or not. And so if he was a lot more accurate than he was on Saturday, looked better throwing the ball down the field when he got his chances, I think you could absolutely take that away from this. Could you see an offensive line that played cleaner without pre-snap penalties, without the not knowing the snap count issue that we've had four times already this year? Okay, uh, those things, I I think. Uh, Your defense. I mean, this this, uh, they're going to face an offense that's – Scored 87 points so far this season, okay? Your defense hold them to less than, I don't know, 27 or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know, 20 held them to 24 or whatever? I'd feel like that was a really good defensive performance, okay? So I, I think there's, from where you are right now, I think this is definitely a game where you could find some things out. In some ways, it's disappointing that we're talking about that sure. with North Texas. But the way you've played after two weeks, it's just where you are. That's you put the yourself harsh in reality of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see uh, this. Uh, so Chuck was worried about North Texas before the season, but now is confident that we'll beat them. I, I what I said was I said I think it'll be a closer game than you think, and I think it'll be a ten point game in the in the fourth quarter. I think that's I think that's pretty much what I. What I said, I mean, Bullfighter, who is our, uh, he's our, like our board secretary here of, uh, of uh, the morning drive. You know, he's, he's, he's really good about taking copious notes and then graphing them for us. Uh, I said at 735 on June the 11th. So what is that? September, let's see, uh, July, August, September, that's three months ago today. I said Tech will win by less than 10 against North Texas. Okay. So that that doesn't, you know. So yeah, so that's that that's what I said. Um I didn't think this was going to happen, but anyway, where we are right now, I didn't think that was totally going to happen. I said that they Abilene Christian would score 29 against us. I didn't think it'd be 52. Ah, <sighs> boy. Uh let's see. One other thing here from the uh Yates Flooring Center chat line. I would take seven and five and sleep like a baby. Next few months are going to be rough. <laughs> seven and five. Would you sleep like a baby at seven and five, Jamie? Do you sleep like a baby? Uh, most most nights I sleep all right. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I, I have pretty good. I also. have my moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Here's the here's the uh, little stat that I said was going to scare the bejesus out of you. Maybe maybe, maybe not. Uh, this is from uh, Texas Tech's uh, copious notes for the weekend. Texas Tech enters this weekend having won 46 consecutive contests against unranked opponents from a non-Power 4 conference. The Red Raiders' last loss in such a manner was uh, to North Texas in 1999. D- did you say at home in there? At home, yeah. You said at home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the play of the Red Raiders over the first two weeks is what's scaring me. Not, sure, not that stat. Sure, no, I understand that. It's just, a, and it's just a stat. I mean, it's not, it's not anything that. It's just history. It's all it is. Um, and the date of that game was uh, September eighteenth. Okay, Tech lost 
21 to 14 in front of 45,824. I think it's probably one of those deals where more people probably claim that they were at that game than were actually at that game. So that was that was not a good start to the season. Uh, and that, that was Spike's last year, and and that was that that game basically forced Spike's retirement. I think he was basically told after that game that you're done. That's also the game. That's also the game that you know Spike had had uh, had spoken that year at the Chamber of Commerce kickoff breakfast, and he had listed off his ABCs of success. You got to have ambition. You got to have belief. You got to have commitment. You got to have desire and you got to have enthusiasm, which I thought, man, that's a, I mean, it was a fantastic speech. I I thought that he could take that on the road and win with it. And so there was an article in the paper when they actually threw it to you. And I, I made a copy of that. And after Spike, after that loss, I sent Spike a note and uh, they had a bye week uh, in between that North Texas loss and then beating uh, then number five A&M on October the 2nd. And uh, <laughs> and Spike sent me a note back and said, "Chuck, you're a peach. Fat lady ain't sung yet, Spike." <laughs> <laughs> and then Tech went out and beat A and M twenty-one to nineteen in front of fifty-three thousand five hundred and thirteen. So that was a good day. Mm-hmm. That was a real good day. Uh, we get this. Uh, definitely feels more like an zero and two team than a one and one team. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, didn't didn't come out of that first game feeling like yeah. you won. Somebody said I left out at home. Well, I'm sorry. At home is not listed in that stat, but as soon as I read that stat, my first thought was at home. Yeah. We well, just lost last week to an unranked, yeah, non-power four yeah. opponent. Yeah. 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 So it had to have needed to have home in there yeah at home yeah i didn't hear chuck say i wasn't certain yeah i but 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 you're i think you're right on that when i read that on monday i turned around to david collier and said they forgot two words at home at home man you could be writing these notes nope no nope that's also why i didn't criticize the guys for making it because i can't do a better job than they can okay all right This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T97.3 podcasts at DoubleT97.3.com.